There's nothing more visceral about mixed martial arts than a knockout finish. I'm not talking about those times when the referee jumps in and saves the fighter from taking any more punishment. I'm talking about the lights getting shut off. Out. Cold. Nobody is home. It's horrifying and fascinating and you feel a bit bad about the whole experience, but you want to see the slow motion replay. There are no fighters that inspire more awe from their contemporaries and the crowd than those with the sheer power to consistently deliver these terrifying finishes. And today, we're going to be counting down the 10 fighters that have been lugging around cinder blocks for limbs, the ones who put their opponents down and keep them there. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and these are the 10 heaviest hands in MMA history. All right, friends, I want you to brace yourselves because this one is going to get heated. Chances are there's a few fighters you're expecting to see on this list that won't end up on here, so they're getting honorable mentions. Chuck. JDS, Yoel, Stipe, they are all lethal on the feet, but the ones on our list are more feared for that single heavy blow that puts an end to the show. Fedor, again, absolutely one of the most feared strikers in MMA history. Not a ton of go-to-sleep knockouts. Same goes for the left hand of God himself, Conor McGregor. Probably the most controversial exclusion. Yes, the Aldo finish is iconic and it's a KO. Yes, the Cage Warriors finish, also pure murder. I'm not saying he's not a heavy hitter. I'm just saying that the majority of his catalog are impressive TKO wins where the referee hopped in and saved his opponent. But all of these fighters were considered for spots and very narrowly missed inclusion. Let's do this shit. Number 10, Johnny Hendricks. Sometimes it only takes a few finishes to grow the legend of terrifying power. One doesn't need to have 300 KOs, but if you select an impressive ones, and suddenly you have a reputation for being a heavy hitter. Case in point, Johnny Hendricks. D1 national champion wrestler, big stocky guy, certainly powerful, but nobody realized he had dynamite hiding in his gloves. That was until he blasted John Fitch into the realm of oblivion in just 12 seconds at UFC 141. One shot is all it took to finish off the top welterweight in the world under George St. Pierre. The first time he'd been finished in the UFC. I don't know how hard I hit. I've been throwing about 80% here lately, and today I just wanted to let it fly and see what happened. Less than a year later, he would do it again. Martin Campman, 46 seconds, almost identical, left hand lands, stiff as a board and heading for the canvas. And just like that, Hendricks became one of the most feared strikers in welterweight history. One of the main storylines going into his title fight with GSP being about how the champion might deal with a clean left that lands because if it does, the fight is over, period. With nine total KO TKOs and four first round finishes, his career may have taken a dive post title run, but for a time, there wasn't a left hand in the sport that was to be avoided more than big rigs. Number nine, Jeremy Stevens. You remember that time that Jeremy Stevens tried to talk shit to Conor McGregor and then he got shut down and Karolina Kovalkiewicz laughed? Well, everybody remembers Conor's hilarious quip, but the thing that Jeremy was saying? This guy TKOs people. When I knock people out, they don't fucking move. Yeah, he was actually right about that. There are very few strikers in the lighter weights that have the power to absolutely end your consciousness, and Jeremy Stevens is one of them. With eight career KOs and 10 TKOs, Little Heathen has garnered a reputation as a striker you don't want hitting you, and for good reason. Cool as cucumber, calm like a bomb, I'm ready to go off. I'm gonna kill this kid, if you don't die, it doesn't count. Marcus Davis, dead. Dennis Bermudez with a flying knee, absolutely incredible. He brutalized Josh Emmett, he finished RDA, and that was in the third round. He keeps his power, a sign of how devastating his strikes are. My favorite Stevens finish, though, is his head kick KO of Hani Jason in just 40 seconds back in 2013. I mean, he's just gone. He's not there in any way, shape, or form. Stevens may have the record for the most losses in UFC history, but there's no doubt about it. You have to watch yourself from start to finish because it only takes one big shot and he can deliver it at any time. Number eight, Melvin Manhoff. Want to see something horribly sad? Here's Melvin Manhoff murdering your childhood hero, Kazushi Sakuraba, in a fight he absolutely should not have been in. Look at the mess with my boy. That finish may be one of the most notable of Manhoff's career, but he has plenty to go along with it. In his kickboxing career, 27 KO TKOs. In MMA, he scored 11 KO finishes and 18 TKOs with 26 first round stops. This is a bad, bad man. In his absolutely bonkers all-time classic fight with Cyborg Santos at Cage Rage 15, he scrambled his opponent's brain so badly, he thought he was winning when it was over and started delivering some of his own completely ineffective ground and pound. The man has a damn KO finish over Mark Hunt. In 18 seconds. Mark Hunt. It was his first ever KO loss. That's a man who ate everything Crow Cop had and went to the scorecards, but Melvin only needed 18 seconds. Even more impressive, despite being in his 40s, he can still bang. Scoring two KOs in Bellator, look at Doug Marshall fly through the air. How did that even happen? While he does not have the most impressive resume, make no mistake about it, from the start of his career in the early 2000s to present day, you do not want to get touched by Melvin Manhoff. Number seven, 
Igor Vochanchin. So you know that era of MMA in the 90s where it just wasn't really popular yet, but all these countries around the world were putting on super violent fights and guys were doing shows like three times a week and getting paid in beer? Igor Vochanchin was the scariest part of that era, I promise you. First of all, let's talk about his kickboxing career, 48 KO TKOs. That is a man proficient in making people sleep. In his MMA career, 12 KO finishes and 29 TKOs, nearly all of those in the first round as well. He scored eight KOs before entering his incredible pride run, and these fights are madness. Here he is attempting to murder Adelson Lima, and there he is fighting giant freak Fred Floyd, 340 pounds. Watch him finish Nick Nutter to win the World Valley Tudo Championship Tournament. Pure Jorge Masvidal there. In pride, he continued being a badass. He gave Gary Goodridge chicken legs. He was Mark Kerr's first ever loss at Pride 7, and the smashing machine got shut off, but the knees were considered illegal, so it got overturned. Igor scored three absolutely devastating KO finishes in Pride that did count, though, the best being Francisco Bueno. The guy got hit like five times on his way to the abyss. His TKOs are all nasty, too. He was just a mean, devastating striker, and definitely the best of the old-school heavy hitters. Number 6. Rampage Jackson He told you he was a monster. Rampage Jackson has the unique distinction on this list of having his most famous KO not coming from a punch or kick, but an absolutely mind-bending slam against Ricardo Arona at Pride Critical Countdown 2004. And while that finish demonstrates the raw strength you're dealing with when you step in there with Jackson, he's got plenty of stops from strikes to go along with it. With 7 career KOs and 12 TKOs, Rampage has been a terror in every era of his career, be it Pride, the UFC, and even Bellator. And with 18 first round stops, you're pretty much fucked if he touches you in the first five minutes. Kevin Randleman, Marvin Eastman, he KO'd Joey Beltran in Bellator. That was the Executioner's second KO loss ever. Vandy at UFC 92, out cold. Of course, he absolutely crumbled then champion and megastar Chuck Liddell to secure the UFC light heavyweight title. One of the most shocking things we'd ever seen. In his blood feud with Rashad Evans, the only good shot he landed nearly won him the fight. And further proving his reputation is warranted, John Jones damn near ran to the other side of the cage whenever Page was in any kind of range to land a big shot. Jackson is violence personified, and any holes in his game he's made up for with pure power. Number 5. Dan Henderson Shuffle, shuffle, H-bomb. Everybody knows it's coming, but it doesn't matter. If Dan Henderson hits you clean with that overhand right, be it at middleweight or light heavyweight, you're getting annihilated. He could probably put down a rhino with that shot. It's one of the most feared and beloved signature strikes in all of MMA, and for good reason. With seven KO finishes and eight TKOs, 13 of those coming in the first five minutes, Hendo's reputation as a striking powerhouse is about as legendary as his career. The most famous example of the incredible force he can generate is, of course, the all-time classic highlight reel finish of heel Michael Bisping at UFC 100. It's one of the greatest knockouts of all time. Probably felt better to knock him out than for them for the bonus check. But. Let's not forget when he put Vanderlei Silva in instant rigor mortis when he stopped him at Pride 33 to win the middleweight title. And that was at 205 pounds. This wasn't Krokop finishing him at heavyweight. Henzo Gracie and Akihiro Gono in Pride. He was the first ever to truly TKO Fedor. Shogun in their rematch. Tim Bosch. But the one finish that always amazed me the most and doesn't get talked about enough is when he stopped Hector Lombard late in his career. This is post-TRT, he's on one foot and just elbows Lombard off balance, and then he's in another reality just like that. I've never seen anything like that. That's a heavy hitter. Number four, Mark Hunt. He is quite simply the king of the walk-off. Mark Hunt's reputation as a heavy-handed striker is warranted, but it wasn't created by sheer volume. Don't get me wrong, he has eight KOs in his legendary K1 career, four in his MMA career, and six TKOs. He gets the job done four times in the first first round, but it's his ability to end a fight so suddenly and so violently that he knows there's absolutely nothing else that needs to be done. He doesn't need a follow-up shot, he doesn't even need the ref to step in because he already knows the outcome. He'll stop the fight himself, and he's done so time and time again. Yosuke Nishijima in pride, Chris Tuxer, Frank Mir, Roy fucking Nelson. Yeah, he walk off KO'd Big Country, and those are just some of the names he's put away. Derek Lewis, Bigfoot Silva, Stefan Struve, he shattered the skyscraper's jaw, by the way. Hunt's legendary power took backseat possibly only to his granite chin. Flat out, his power shots were to be avoided by anyone who had a chance of beating him, and while he may not have the most finishes on our list, nobody did them with quite as much style. Number 3. Shane Carwin 
This man never saw the second round of a fight until he was competing for the UFC Heavyweight Championship against Brock Lesnar at UFC 116, where he would suffer his first ever loss, and that says just about everything you need to know about Shane Carwin. This monster of a man, this D2 national champion wrestler slash civil engineer with hands like a pair of wall safes. The only reason he isn't higher on this list is because his candle burned bright for such a brief period of time. But had his back not given way, there's a good chance Carwin would be putting people's lights out well into 2015. With goodnight finishes of Christian Wellish, Gabriel Gonzaga, and Frank Mir, it only took four fights in the UFC with four stops for everyone to collectively say, holy shit. This guy has Dim Mock in his hands, let's put him in a title fight. A glancing shot would drop Lesnar in that championship bout, and then Carwin would punch himself out trying to get the finish, but had he landed cleaner, UFC 200 would have been the return of nobody because Brock wouldn't exist anymore. Like the Super Shredder in Turtles 2, Shane was sadly not meant to last long in this sport of MMA, but his incredibly terrifying power will live on forever. Number 2. Anthony Johnson the thing about Anthony Johnson is he's been a terrifying problem since he was fighting at 170 pounds, and that power would only grow as he grew. Rumble made his UFC debut by knocking Chad Rainier out absolutely cold in 13 seconds at 170 pounds, so the precedent was set right out of the gate. His second fight lasted less than a minute as well. Same result, guy is frozen in time on his way to dreamland. Then he would display the power of his kicks by brutally finishing Kevin Burns in their rematch and Charlie Brenneman. You send that money, don't forget one thing. What? A good supply of body bags. But he had a weight problem, so he's out of the UFC by 2012. In the World Series of Fighting, he is a destroyer. Look at DJ Lederman faceplant, my god. Mike Kyle gets it too, he breaks Andre Arlovsky's jaw in their fight, and then finally he gets back to the UFC, and this is where his power starts to become legendary. He puts down Lil Nog, brutalizes Gustafson on the ground, KOs Ryan Bader on the ground, Jimmy Manawa gets it, poor Glover Teixeira gets his tooth blasted into the upper atmosphere before napping. In his first title fight with DC, he punched punches him so hard, he flies halfway across the cage. I've never seen that before. 10 KOs in his career, 6 TKOs, 12 first round finishes. He is so powerful, people are sweating his return at heavyweight if he actually makes it. Quite simply, there just aren't any fighters in MMA scarier or more heavy handed than Rumble, except for our top entry. Number 1. Francis Ngannou while the honorable mentions might be controversial, was there any doubt about number one? Francis Ngannou may not have the volume of finishes that Rumble has, but in his five career KOs and six TKOs, he has already garnered a reputation that rivals anyone that's ever stepped into the arena. Not since Mike Tyson's early career, the Kid Dynamite era, have people been so in awe of raw power. It's just hard not to put Ngannou at the top of a list called heaviest hitters when he so clearly has the heaviest hands we've yet seen in this sport. Here is some early destruction he shared on on Twitter recently, that's from his third ever fight. Francis has power you cannot teach. In his UFC debut, he massacred Luis Henrique. Since then, he has scored five TKOs over some of the best in the division, and his other three knockouts defy understanding. With what seemed like just the slightest of touches, he ended Cain Velasquez's comeback, completely buckled him. Poor Jarzinho Rosenstreich, he might still be laying on the mat in Jacksonville, Florida. And of course, the highlight of all highlights, his Mortal Kombat 2 toasty uppercut of Alistair Overeem. It is one of the most horrifying things that's ever happened in mixed martial arts. It might be the hardest punch that's ever landed. The only two losses he ever suffered in the UFC were only because he didn't land a clean shot. That is it. There is no surviving Francis Ngannou if he hits you square. The fight is over. He is the heaviest hitter, no questions. Huge shout out to the pride of the West Midlands, Tom Moore, for putting his editing sorcery to work on this video. Follow him on Twitter at TomMJMoore. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. We've got three new videos or more for you every single week. Let us know what you thought of the video in the comments below. Follow On Point MMA on Twitter and have yourself a wonderful day.